All right then, greetings to each and every one, wherever you are around the world. My name is Minister Errol Trench from Trench Altar Ministry, a circumstances changer. I introduce myself just in case somebody somewhere have never heard of Trench Altar Ministry or never heard a message from Minister Errol Trench. To God be the glory wherever you are to God be the glory. I trust that you're giving him praise. I trust that you're thanking him. I trust that you're honoring him. Even though there may be times in which you of your own self might be saying, why should I give him thanks? Life's Life doesn't seem fair. Why should I give him thanks? Well, first thing first, you're really not necessarily giving him thanks for what he's about to do or what he's going to do. You're giving him thanks for what he has already done. Okay, so what is it? he has done for me to give him thanks well first thing first believe it or not he allow you to breathe most people doesn't think about those things God allow you to breathe well in that case Errol then I'm not the only one supposed to give him thanks because the whole world is breathing. Yes, but do you want to be one of the unfaithful or one of the ungrateful ones not to give him thanks? Or would you want to be one of the grateful one to recognize that because of the Lord, I am able to breathe the fresh air. Now let me also remind you and speak to those who is unable to breathe fresh air because they're using an accident oxygen tank. We may not be, you may not necessarily be celebrating breathing the fresh air without an accident tank. But there is a million and one thing to give God thanks for. Man sometimes get caught up in trying to figure out why do I need to give the Lord praise? The word of the Almighty God said, praises belongs to him. Now, the only reason I used the word a while ago about breathing is because rightfully so the minute or the moment you and I are unable to breathe it caught or it, it catch our attention immediately breathing is the sense of, obje of observing breathing when it comes on to breathing when a child or a baby is born or born, one of the very first thing that the medical profession or the medical doctor does is to check to see if the child is breathing. When you go to an area where someone had or experienced an accident, one of the very first thing that the person who arrive and location they check to see if he or she is breathing if you call if you are the first person that arrive or one of the first person and you were to call what is considered as 911 
the question or one of the questions that they will ask you if you describe to them that there's a person on the floor they ask you is the person conscious or unconscious or they may ask you is the person breathing all of these things about breathing it is extremely important even though we may ignore all those things to do with the breath. Yet the Bible said that God said, let us create man in our image. Each and every human being and this huge, humongous, highway there may be many cultures culture many ethnic background many different background many different languages many different color many not many different color but brown tan white or black it doesn't matter different languages God said let us create man in our image and the Bible said God took dirt or the dust from the earth and created man in his image on top of that he then breathed the breath his breath into man now i am basically going from the terms of the bible god created man from the dust of the earth and then breathed into him life so when i speak of breathing and giving thanks for the ability to breathe it is a very important subject I am speaking of because God before man was introduced he created the earth he created everything that you can see around us now, yes, I went through the Bible college and I went through the theology teaching and I went through and there's always a, 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 a back and forth between what some say. Some say it was a kaboom. The Darwin theory. A big kaboom. They even a show on TV about the, the kaboom. But ladies and gentlemen, I do not know how good a kaboom could be to let the orbit falls into place, the stars fall into place, the planets fall into place, behind one another beautifully structure the heavenly realm the, the 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 when i say the heavenly realm the planets and all the places and whatever the earth and the all of those things well the darwin theory is what it is however each and every man on this here highway every earthly man on this highway with me today that I do not know who they are God said let us make man or create man in our image and the word our image was referring to the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit this our image is referring to 
This our image is referring to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This whole highway that is full of pedestrians or motorists and many of these automobiles has three, four, five people in it based on the size of the vehicle and based on the size of the seating. They are a part of let us create man in our image. So the very first statement referring to the world, to you man, was let us create man in our image. That was the very first statement after God has put the light into the, separate the, the night from the light and make the greater light the day and the lesser light the night. Let us put the stars in the sky. Let us put fishes in the ocean. Let us let us let the dry land, let us separate the water from the waters. Let us call the dry land earth and the, the wetland, let us call it the sea. Let's put every moving, creeping things. Let us fill the ocean with, with life. Let us things on the earth. Like the cattle, as I, God made two of everything, male and female. At that moment in time, man has not yet been introduced. The Genesis said, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without form. This beautiful structure in which I am driving on, God did not see things as it is, as I'm seeing it, and then said, let us create the heaven and the earth. Or did it say, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. This is the after of what God have done. But the greatest work was yet not accomplished. The greatest work, I believe, is when he, God said, now let us make man in our image and so God allow took the earth from the ground and put for man now you may fail to accept that but many of you do go to a funeral or maybe once or twice then many of you that are in doubt of what I'm saying or what the Bible said, when your loved one are being laid to rest after a while on earth, your loving priest or your loving minister that you are aware of, your loving minister, the loving minister that you know, he said, we will commit this body. I hope I'm not interrupting anybody's thought or feeling back to the earth. He used the word ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Now, my friends, you challenge the Bible, but you did not challenge the priests. That loving man that you know for years, you challenge. When you heard that man created from the dust of the earth, but you did not challenge the minister or the priest when he said, ashes to ashes and dust to dust. We give him back to the earth. You didn't challenge that. But you will challenge when you hear, heard that God have created man from the dust. Next area is that God, it set up and God created man. He then in turn breathed the breath of life in him. 
God breathed the breath of life in him. In every one of these motorists that you are seeing on the highway, every one of these motorists that I am passing on the motorway, they're either going my direction or the opposite direction. Each and every one of them that you're seeing, every one of them that you're seeing on this highway, every one, every one of them has the capability to breathe. In other words, breathing is universal. The nostril and God's, it, the Bible said that God breathed into the nostril, life into man, in the nostril. This is why majority of human beings breathe, 99% of human beings breathe through their nostril. The medical doctor, the medical doctor knows if he or she is going to do anything towards the person's breathing, it has to do with their nostril, their nose, or better yet, through their mouth. If there's an emergency again, let, let us go back a little bit. Let's take a couple back. The Bible said, the Bible, the Bible said that God upon created man. Now what I truly observe, what I truly observe is how much man challenge the Bible. That's what I truly observe, how much man challenge the Bible, but it's only when it has to do with accepting the word of God. That's the only time that they challenge the Bible. My question to you, the Bible has been written for centuries. The Bible, obse ob ob observingly, has been written for centuries. Yet, I believe the very first place it is said that God up and created man from the dust of the earth. He then said he breathed the breath of life into man. He breathed the breath of life into man that man became a living soul. That is the very first thing upon after creating man from the dust then the word said he then breathed into man and man became a living soul that took care of that every man on this highway that reference is referred to that man became a living soul. There is absolutely no one on this highway as busy and as packed as it may seem that doesn't somewhat breathe similar to me and breathe similar to you. There is no confusion in how these individuals on these highway breathing our breathing are extremely similar and when this person if this individual or any of these party should go to a hospital the checking of their breathing checking to see if they have any pulse it is universal for those who are in the medical practice there's a way of checking beneath their, at their neck, at their throat, to see if they have a pulse. Checking the arm above the wrist to see if they, and the inner part, to see if they have a pulse. 
listening to the heart, to the chest, to see if they are breathing. That usually is the un a person who may be more unconscious. It is universal. Now, the word breathing said God created man from the dust of the earth. Then he breathed and into them, into his nostril or her nostril, but man's nostril, and they became a living soul. That meant without the breathing, there is absolutely no life. The ability to breathe, that's what creates life. Earlier, I spoke that if you are able to breathe, you have life. And if you're even on some artificial breathing machine, that is extended life to you. But let us go back a couple of steps. God created man from the dust of the earth. Let's go back one more step. And God looked over the earth after creating the earth and see it was good. Let's go back one more step. And God said, or the Bible said, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form. And void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. So God called everything into existence. Without man's permission. And without man's existence. But then the earth that was created. And he put all the things that is necessary. He now said let us create man in our image and that us happen to be the father the son and the holy spirit who happen to be the godhead and recognize as the trinity the father the son and the holy spirit but then he took it a little further and decided all right now that we're going to create man in our image, all these men on the highway became from God's image. Well, Errol, some of them is white and some of are Chinese and some are tall or some are short. Well, you do not know what you truly look like. The body that you see in the mirror is the body in which God use as a cover because you do not know God's image you do not know what God look like I do not know what God look like but God said let us make man now you and I understand that young people are much more younger vibrant but as time goes on we became a little feeble and so on and so on and so on the beauty of our structure change so that meant the body that you love so much all of a sudden because it is not necessary the image of God. What you're looking at is the outward clothing. So let's go back to the breathing. God said let us make man. Let us create man is in our image. But something else happened along the way. God said after taking the dust of the earth and created man in his image he then in turn in turn said let us now that he created man the bible said that god took this not only god took god now breathe the breath he breathed the ear that men are functioning on the breathing the life man became alive the dust of the earth became alive. You listen to me carefully. 
you can go you will see children does this all the time or big people they go to the beach and they make a man structure or a female structure or a human structure let me let you know you are doing something similar to what God have done but the only thing that God have done it listen carefully but one thing that nobody have ever done at the beach or done anywhere else they cannot breathe and let that become life believe it or not the next time you see somebody make a a sun person or a or a dirt person from the beach or from wherever say to them now breathe in it and let it become life the only individual that have done that is God so man became a living soul based on what the Bible said God breathed into his or her into man's nostril and they became a living soul this is the reason why it is so breathing is the life if men are not functioning or whatever they give him or her oxygen because men need to able to breathe the ear the breath God is the one who plays living breath and ear or that man can function he became a living soul now watch this who do you think taught if a person is at a pool or a hole of water and was in a drowning situation we we call it a, um, a first aid but they breathe into his nostril or his mouth to give him ear God is the one who have created that very example how did please research in history and tell me when did man recognize that they could breathe into man to bring give him ear hallelujah search where did it came from God said after creating man from the dust he became and then he breathed into his nostril he became a living soul so if somebody came out of the water who was drowning lack of oxygen now you will hear somebody said they are trying to reset re, trying to bring him back they will breathe into his mouth or into his nostril because he need ear that was how man created in the first place you will not say at the beach if your loved one is in a problem you will not say to the lifeguard do me a favor do not breathe into him or blow ear into him because the Bible is a lie you will not say that you will not say do not give him any air do not give him any oxygen do not give him any ability because the Bible is a lie you will probably stand in there breathe into his nostril breathe into his mouth breathe into his lungs well the first example was the Bible said that God breathed into the breath of life the breath of life into man and he became a living soul so there is certain part that you seem to argue there's certain part that you seem to have an issue with but you don't have an issue when someone is trying to save your loved one at the beach when the doctor said he needs air he needs oxygen this is something that God did day one when he created man you do not say to the doctor doctor you do not do that now we know that we have based in religion they how it is we know that part but what I'm trying to say to you you heard sometime and if I if this is happening for you right now please accept my sincere apology if you have somebody in ICU or wherever but what I'm trying to say to you there are sometime in intensive care they have to do 
the breathing. Help them to do the breathing. That's how important the breath of life is. To breathe. When I talk about giving thanks that the God has brought, God has breathed into your nostril and allow you to, you became a living soul. So, uh, there's so many things all over the world. You can argue a lot of things, but ladies and gentlemen, do not argue the good things that God have did for you to be, give you life. You can argue. You can argue that the bank has increased your interest rate. You can argue that the, the bank has, have, have whatever, argue. You can argue that. But don't argue that God have created you from the dust. Do not argue that God has breathed into you his breath and make you a living soul. You do not interrupt your priests. Let me tell you something. Each and every man, every man, every earthly man in the planet, Irrelevant of our background, irrelevant of our culture, irrelevant. Each and every one of us suffer similar loss. Our loved one passed away. And no one passed away. The doctor entered the room. And I forgive me for stepping and treading on tender ground here but the doctor stepped into the room and his indication is are they breathing they use the machine to identify their heart rate are they breathing the doctor will not and cannot and would not announce the person passed away if they're breathing so breathing is essential to life. And that first breath that you have taken, the Bible said that God breathed into the nostril of man and they became a living soul. So if you're going to argue the Bible, argued how did a big kaboom allow me to become a living soul because you are not rejecting just the bible you are rejecting that god allow you to become a living soul we trust that man will get out of their thinking method and accept the word of the almighty god you're listening to the voice of minister errol trench from trench altar ministry, a circumstances changer. Each and every one on this road with me, each and every one on this highway, we all breathe the same. And if they do not have that a breathing ability because of something happened in their life, they are using an oxygen tank or something of the nature to create an, a breathing ability, they are breathing life is breathing why should i give thanks to god because i can breathe why can i should i give thanks to god because he have made me a living soul why do i need to give thanks to god why is there is a reason for me to give thanks to god well let me say this to you every now and then there is a thing called a rebate rebate meaning that you will pay full price for any and everything you will pay full price but there is a rebate there is a rebate and the rebate is in a, maybe eight months or a year or six months you will get a refund or maybe not a refund but a rebate a certain amount but you pay the price well you accept a rebate you paid you gave your credit card and will accept a rebate well 
you did not argue that because you want what God what men are giving you you did not question you accept the rebate rebate later on there will be some form of recompensation you accept it you pay an insurance policy that if anything happen in the future you will be rewarded maybe whether it's an accident a certain thing premium or whatever you pay your premium just in case you do not argue with the insurance company you do not argue with the rebate you invest your money that later on at age 65 or 70 you have a pen you do not argue that you accept the rebate why can't you accept and then later on when you get before God you could say God please explain this to me but why would you take the chance to say well I will reject everything that I heard accept the rebate accept the rebate of he created you from the dust of the earth accept the rebate that he have breathed into your nostril life no God is a masterpiece God is a master because God once he created a replica it continued to flow it continued to flow but the very thing that the Bible said that God have done it has to be a repeat process it repeat over and over the same method of breathing the same method of how men breathe, it's the same over and over again. That meant nothing changed from what God have done day one in the nostril of man. And up and man passed away, your loved one or your friends or whatever, the priests said we will commit this body back to the earth. You do not argue with him. Doesn't matter how rich you are and how poor you are. It's the same thing. It is the same thing. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Men have gone back to the earth from where they came. You do not argue that. You accept that part. So why before, why Prior to all the part, prior to all of that, why can't you accept that you were created from the dust of the earth? Why can't you accept that God, doesn't matter how beautiful you are, you were created from the dust of the earth? And doesn't matter how rich you are, God breathed into the nostril of man and he became a living soul and doesn't matter how rich you are at the end of life's journey the priest or the minister commit that body back to the earth and rather doesn't matter what's the culture a sign of life is breathing a baby is born and the doctor check to see if he's breathing that's the purpose and the power of the breath that God has breathed into our nostril and sadly doesn't matter the culture at the end of time you will hear that they said anywhere in death record anywhere in the world of a pronouncing of death and he passed away or he succumbed meaning that person no longer was breathing no longer breathing the beginning of life she or her is breathing the very thing that God breathed and make him or her man became a living soul but at the end of eternity, man, man's life, that breathing ceases. No longer breathing. That's what makes he or she no longer has life. Why don't you argue that? 
And when the priest said, we will commit this body back to the earth. You don't jump up in your chair and say, whoa, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Because you accept it that man came from the earth. So really and truly, it's really about convenient and sometimes stubborn why we do not accept the Bible. Because the whole routine is the same. Man breathe similar. Man breathing is similar. Man commit back to the earth is similar. Man's ability to life is similar. Man's ability of failure of life is extremely similar. There is no argument about the universal of man's life. There is no conversation. We all have a universal ability to breathe similar through our nostril and through our mouth. The Bible written centuries upon centuries and it said after God created man from the dust of the earth, he then breathed into his nostril and he became a living soul. A living soul. You listen to the voice of Minister Errol Trench. From Trench Altar Ministry, a circumstances changer. And I hope to the Almighty God that you will accept these words. You will accept these words. If you do not familiar with the Bible, get a hold of a Bible and turn to Genesis, the first book of the Bible. Genesis. But do not fail to ignore that God have created you from the dust of the earth. And do not fail to accept that God have breathed into your nostril that what? And you became a living soul. Do not fail to accept that life allow you, the fact that you can breathe, you have life. And a part of life, a part of the failure of life is a failure of breathing. You do not want God to remove your breath. You do not wish for God to remove your breath. Your breath is something that it is, it is so personal. You do not want God to remove your breath. And any man that unable to breathe, he is no longer exist. And someday every man will lose that breathing ability. You cannot do nothing about it. It is a must. But why don't you accept it now? Accept it today that God has given you the ability to breathe. Accept it today that God has given you the ability to breathe. Accept it today that God has given you the ability to breathe. May God bless you and keep you until next time. Minister Errol Trench, Trench Altar Ministry, a circumstances changer and your circumstances can be changed. Vis visit us at trenchalterministry.com. Find us anywhere on the web, trenchalterministry.com. God bless you. Until next time.